Suppose your goal is to detect if there is an object, such as a cat, in an image. If there is a cat, then draw a bounding box around that object. To detect if there is a cat or not, we can use a single neuron. If its value is greater than 0.5, then that object is present in the image. And if then value is less than 0.5, then that object is not present in image. Now, if there is a cat, to draw a rectangle around the object, we need the top left corner of the object. When we say top left corner, we mean the x and y coordinates of its top left position of bounding box. After this, we need the width and height of the rectangle to draw the rectangle. We can easily draw a rectangle if we have those four values. First, its top left corner coordinates, and then its width and height. But our goal was to also label the object in the image, and for this, we add 20 more values. These values are just to classify 20 different object types in the image. Now, if we train a neural network to predict these 25 values, where the first value is for whether there is an object or not, the next two are for its center x and y position, and the next two are for its width and height. The last 20 values are to classify the type of object we detected, either a person, a car, or something else. Now, there are two questions to answer. The first is how to train such a model to predict these 25 values accurately, and the second question is, what if there is more than one object in an image? How do we detect both of them? For this, we can add five more output neurons for the neural network. Now we can detect two objects in an image, but both objects should be of the same class because you can see that class probabilities are the same for both bounding boxes. So the total number of neurons to detect two objects in an image is 30. In the YOLO paper, it is mentioned that they only add one class probability for each cell regardless of how many bounding boxes they predict. But what if there are more than two objects in an image, and also they belong to different classes? For this, we use another technique where we divide the entire image into a 7 cross 7 grid. Each grid is responsible for the detection of two objects in an image. This way, we can now detect a total of 7 into 7 into 2 or we can say 98 objects in an image. Now with that in mind, the total output neurons to detect those objects can be given by this number, where 7 cross 7 represents the total grids and 30 values for two bounding boxes for each grid. Remember, if there is an object that is present in multiple bounding boxes, then the grid with the center of the object is responsible for the detection of that object and other grids are not responsible for detecting that object.